Right now at 11 o'clock, stolen luggage has a local man calling for some changes at PDX. After someone walked off with his bag, he now wants tighter security at baggage claim. And dirty slides, bathrooms out of service. Some parents say the Jurassic Tour, currently stopped in Portland, is a dinosaur-sized ripoff. Plus, it's goodbye to 2018. New Year's Eve is here. We talked to some Portlanders about how they're feeling about the past year and the start of a new one. This is KGW News at 11. Thanks for being with us. I'm Dan Haggerty. First at 11 o'clock, a mystery in Oregon City. A duck shot with what appears to be a blow dart. Family found this duck at Clackamette Park. KGW is Mike Benner. Just back from there now. Mike, you spoke with the family that found the duck. What'd they tell you? Yeah, I did, Dan, and uh, this has been quite an unsettling experience for them. They're uh, confident this was a deliberate act. Someone trying to hurt, if not kill, an innocent, helpless duck. They hope this ends immediately. Yeah, yeah, over there. Melanie Kuhn returns to a dark Clackamat Park, where just 24 hours earlier, she and her family made a disturbing discovery. Our kids were pretty upset by it. While feeding ducks near the boat ramp Sunday afternoon, Kuhn and her family spotted one duck with something sticking out of its neck. They had the presence of mind to snap this photo. My boyfriend's daughter originally saw an orange thing on the duck's neck. We took a closer look and realized it was a blow dart. Take another look. It certainly does look like a blow dart in one side of the neck and out the other. I only saw one, but I'm sure there's probably other ducks with darts in their bodies. Kuhn says, believe it or not, the duck did not seem bothered by the projectile, but she's not any less worried about what happened. Yeah, my concern is um, that someone's out here doing this. With that in mind, we asked Kuhn who would do such a horrible thing like this. Her answer was simple. Somebody um, who's cruel. Oh, hopefully I'll never have to meet him. <laughs> All right, so you may be asking yourself why the family did not try to remove the dart. The thought there was removing it could actually do more harm than good. In the meantime, we did reach out to the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office to see if they've received any reports of this. We have not yet heard back. As always, if you have information on how this happened, you should contact authorities. Dan, back to you. Yeah, terrible seeing that picture, what that duck must be going through. Uh, hopefully they catch somebody. Thanks, Mike. A woman seen on video shouting racial slurs, threatening a black couple in McMinnville, appeared in court today. Officers arrested 39-year-old Amber Rocco after this racist tirade was posted on Facebook. Yeah, is really trying to stop him. What's just up? because... No, I don't yeah, you stop are. and it's called stop yeah. the guns, you stupid... Yeah. Who the are you calling it? Rocco's facing charges in connection with that confrontation on Christmas Eve, where she can be heard yelling racial slurs, holding a knife at one point. The woman who shot the cell phone video, Amora Roberson, Roberson says that she and her family were shopping at that strip mall in McMinnville. She claims Rocco got angry about how they parked, started shouting at them and the, yelling those racial slurs. In court today, Rocco tried to apologize for this before the judge cut her off. Well, I do deeply regret all of my actions that led up to all of these charges. Rocco, yes. I yes. told you again, don't talk about what they say you did. Rocco is due back in court on Thursday. The judge will decide whether she'll be released before going to trial. So we know there are a lot of bike thieves in Portland. There just are. A few are uh, this brazen, though. The Gladstone Police Department posting this surveillance video of a man stealing a bike from the Gladstone Police Department. See where it says police on the left there? That's because it's the police station. Dude, come on. It says police right next to the bike. And as you would imagine, this is how it ends. Police walk out the front door. They have a taser on him, they cuff him, they arrest him. He's spending New Year's Eve and uh, I guess, well, maybe in jail still now into 2019. Who knows? Not the smartest guy in the world. A uh, Milwaukee man says someone stole his luggage off of the baggage claim carousel at PDX Airport. He wants some tighter security now. He wants them to stop this from happening again to somebody. David Grilly and his husband, they flew into PDX Saturday night. They were visiting family in Chicago. Be because of some issues with the airlines on their way home, the bags got to Portland before they did. At baggage claim, they only found two of their three bags. So officers found some surveillance video of a man eyeing Grilly's bags, then grabbing one of them and taking off. Grilly says people should not be able to easily steal bags, and PDX and the airlines need to find a way to beef up security. I think it's um, very negligent that airports in America think that this security in this day and age, the year 2018, when crime is going up and up, um, that 
you know, that there's no system in place to prevent these bags from being taken. Uh, the police officer at Portland Airport told us that this is an ongoing problem at Portland. So we, we want to ask some more questions about the ongoing problem that he mentioned there. And airport officials tell us that of the 20 million people who have come through PDX this year, 200 bags have been reported stolen. David Grilly is hoping PDX makes some changes still, like making the baggage claim a secure area like in some other airports. All right, let's take a look downtown right now on this New Year's Eve. The Rose City Sky Cam, the city lit up and beautiful. It is chilly out there. Uh, meteorologist Chris McGinnis joining us right now from the Weather Center. We know it's cold. Uh, you mentioned earlier that it might get a little slippery out there on the roads as well. Yeah, and there's definitely uh, a chance of flying confetti out here at any minute, too. Let's go ahead and check out our Rose City Sky Camera. We are 32 degrees last check at the airport. Yes, we are not chilly. We are freezing, literally freezing at the freezing mark. With calm winds, the air uh, close to being saturated as well, which means that we will probably start to see some areas of fog forming later on tonight. And with the temperatures below freezing, that brings in the possibility of freezing fog. We're down to 29 now. Hillsboro's Capoose 30, Battleground 27. Watch yourself if you're out on the roads late this evening for obvious reasons, but also because we could have some icy patches out there tonight. We're down to 32 last check in Salem and 30 in Kaiser. Our day planner for the first day of the new year, Tuesday, also known as New Year's Day. Areas of fog and freezing fog tomorrow morning with temperatures right around 30 degrees or so. The fog and the low clouds should lift. We'll, we'll see a day tomorrow, much like what we had today. Late day sunshine and highs in the 40s. A dry day tomorrow. Next round of rain coming in later in the week. We'll look at that in more detail coming up in just a few minutes. Dan. All right, more from Chris soon. Thank you, sir. So for years, 0.08 has been the legal limit for drinking and driving, but that could soon change here in Oregon. Senate President Peter Courtney plans to introduce a bill to lower that limit to 0.05. Now, Utah has already done this. They're the first state to make this change and to drop the limit. Courtney says that here in Oregon, it will be an uphill battle to get the bill passed, but thinks that right now is the right time to push for it. We've changed, and the car has become, pure and simple, a deadly weapon. And in effect, I'm not trying to stop people from drinking. I don't think this will. I'm not trying to stop people from buying alcohol. I don't think this will. I'm just saying it's time to take the next step where you cannot drink and drive. The National Transportation Safety Board, they've already been urging all 50 states to lower their limits. It says deadly crashes would drop 11%. That would save 1,800 lives a year. So, Duck fans, Oregon fans, celebrating with a win tonight. It might not have been exactly how they hoped things would go. It was a defensive struggle, but Oregon did knock off Michigan State in the Red Box Bowl. Neither team scored a point in the first half. Spartans got two field goals in the third quarter, and then the Ducks finally breaking through in the fourth quarter. Nice pass there. Justin Herbert connecting with Dylan Mitchell. 28-yard strike, and that's all the Ducks would need in this one. That and the extra point. Defense made big stops down the stretch. Oregon wins 7-6, the Ducks' first bowl game victory since the 2015 Rose Bowl when they beat Florida State. Hey, coming up, parents are saying they're torn this children's event. It didn't really live up to the hype, not even close. How the manager of the Jurassic Tour is responding now to their complaints. Plus, we're less than an hour from 2019 here on the West Coast. We asked what you're most excited for in the new year and what you're going to be pretty happy to leave behind in 2018. That's next.